Hey, this is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on the trauma bond that is experienced when you're in a relationship with a malignant narcissist, or particularly, I think the question is, in a psychopathic relationship. They're having trouble understanding what is a trauma bond in a psychopathic relationship. To understand a trauma bond, it's to understand that that occurs when the connection or the relationship is very close, tight, resistive to change, despite evidence to um, the contrary of it being healthy. In other words, the relationship is creating a destructive or unhealthy result or outcome in your life. It's making you unhappy. It's causing distraction. It's causing you to feel broken down. It's causing you to feel depressed. It's causing you to feel helpless or hopeless. Um, you feel that you um, are inextricably um, connected with this person. You have trouble breaking free because perhaps part of the formative years of the journey of your life journey, you might have spent with this individual. In other words, it could be a boss. It could be someone who you fell in love with. It could be a teacher. It could be a family member. But a trauma bond is when you're loyal to a relationship despite really evidence of destruction or it's been hurtful or negative to you, i.e., you know, physically abusive. Um, perhaps you might have exposed this individual uh, for some real life-changing or relationship-changing, game-changing situations that make the relationship um, not healthy for you, that you should really resolve as null and void. In other words, you know, if someone were to, uh, what's the word, if someone were to um, wire all the funds out of your account, um, it's not wire fraud, but, you know, uh, or, <clears throat> you know, to do something very hurtful to you. Um, a psychopath will take pleasure from someone else's destruction or unhappiness or suffering. They, they get a an excessive dopamine reward reaction. Um, I think embezzle was the word. Um, so, you know, obvious behaviors um, that are not positive to you, yet they seem very unaffected about. In other words, they don't feel that they have done anything wrong. They're not fearful of being caught. They're not fearful of consequences. They're not fearful that anything is going to happen because they don't, aren't experiencing fear. They are, you know, psychopathic, antisocial. Um, they, they don't experience feel or the fight or flight or emotions like the rest of society, despite the appearance as if these individuals will mimic, you know, mimic emotions, mimic reactions, mimic a personality, mimic a, um, a role at a job, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 their ability, um, to absorb, sort of suss out, size up others, and then process it and mimic it. They, they mimic it back better than the source of the original source. In other words, better than that from which they are picking up. They have a constant need to um, sort of scope out and suss out and observe others, especially what couples might do or what, what people might do while they listen to music or what they do at meetings, you know, how they pay attention how they, um, you know, have banter or discussion. They, they are able to sort of see through others. I would, I, I equate it to something like an x-ray vision. In other words, realize because of, of, of a relationship with a psychopath, their amygdala, um, you know, there's been studies that have shown um, by a doctor um, of psychology in Madison, I, I will get his uh, name up um, in one of the videos, but he, he's done a study on you know, the inpatient incarcerated population, um, looking at, at criminals, criminal behavior. And largely it's felt that about 25% of those incarcerated are psychopathic. In um, the rest of the, you know, regular population is it felt to be about one to 4%. So one to four in a hundred. But it's to understand that there is a different physiology, a, a, a different anatomy, a, a, a different um, brain unatom, um, anatomy um, that is distinguishing really the psychopath from others. And that is a reduced amygdala, which is the fear center, the fight or flight. So they don't have that set of fear, um, anxiety, or nervousness. They don't experience this. Um, this makes them what is known as fearless. 
You might have heard of a fear, fearless leader. So oftentimes it has these positive connotations. You know, they don't get nervous when most people would, would in their right mind, be nervous. Um, or um, in their right mind, they would be sad or melancholy. Um, they would be distressed. They, they don't exhibit any distress. In other words, kids calling them, you know, you forgot to pick us up. We're, we're stranded at the school. It's 45 minutes late and it's starting to rain. You know, um, in other words, most parents would be like, oh my God, you'd have to, you know, pick my jaw up off the, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, I had my, um, my dance lesson or my haircut and I totally forgot. Stay right there, you know, go to this, you know, they'll work out, um, you know, they'll be there and they'll respond. A psychopath does not feel that fear. They do not feel apprehension. They don't feel anxiety. They're not worried about their kids. You know, it's just, they're, you know, whatever suits their needs, they'll be there whenever or call somebody else will be the, um, uh, the, the way that it's expressed. So these individuals are fearless. Um, so it gives them an inability and, and quote unquote air quotes ability that is enhanced, stepped up or more profound, um, in nature, in other words, more intense in nature that gives them the ability to do things most people would not be comfortable doing. Even if you're growing in your, your profession, you're out of your comfort zone, you're doing a new thing, we're talking about something on a whole different level where they don't experience fear. Um, so they don't really worry about consequences. Um, and we're going to get to that in a minute, but also in a psychopath, they also have reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex which is the most evolved, most recently evolved part of the brain where your higher order thinking goes is, you know, is um, engaged in that part of the brain, you know, part of the brain are there for your vision, your sense, your sense, your touch. It's, there's a whole brain map, but the prefrontal cortex is where you, you know, engage in a lot of your thinking, your decision-making, your consciousness, your planning for the future, your judgment, right or wrong, and your ability really to learn. So whether you're learning an alphabet or you're learning a moral lesson, this is where you learn and then you adjust. Hey, I'm not going to speed. I got a ticket that cost me $100 or whatever. I'm not going to speed it. You know, that's learn and adjustment. So a psychopath, especially in matters of conscience, meaning right or wrong, the, um, the way that, um, you know, somebody has, is treating you um, can be exploitative in nature. In other words, the psychopath, um, will engage in much more corrupt, hurtful, exploitative behavior and treatment of others, I would say to a degree that most others are not physically capable of. They're, they have they're, uh, something in their gut would stop them. Something in their mind would stop them. Something in their heart, you know, this is wrong. Like, I just won't do this. You know, that is having a moral, a sense of morality or a higher consciousness or even, you know, in many other ways that is portrayed, meaning you know, I won't engage in um, this type of relationship. I won't uh, cheat. I won't cheat on, uh, you know, the spouse. I won't cheat on the job. I won't cheat at my church. You know, these sort of moral, uh, that, you know, constitute a character. Um, and why would one stay even maybe when you've got to the point where you have exposed a real psychopath? You know, you've seen the mass drop. There is an absence of sort of emotional sort of fleshiness when you see this, the color drops from the face. The expression is completely different. The psychopath will generate this appearance as if, you know, all the way down to how they carry themselves, how they talk, the words that they say, these are all very selected based on a, a very deep and profound ability. And I say ability because it is based on, I think, a hyper- in other words, because it is my feeling that because of this, this reduced activity, you know, that the other behaviors are then en enhanced things that they engage in, particularly if it's to get them what they want, which means money, position, power, contacts, um, accolades, um, gifts, um, you know, awards, public, uh, it, you know, display, you know, things that give them the ego stroke, whatever it is that they want. You know, and, and, and in this way, they will they, they will basically feel uh, others are laughable or quote unquote stupid um, for having normal inhibitions like a moral character or fear. They feel that they, they interpret this experience of their own deficit as a positive. In other words, they can easily outsmart people, 
commit crime, what have you, and they don't feel remorse or regret. They do not experience remorse or regret. They, they do not feel sorry, even if you've, you know, so this is part, there's so much to this. Um, but the problem also is why people stay is because the psychopath has such facility with the pathology. In other words, they can be very convincing in their lies. I mean, they, they don't flinch, they don't flail, they don't shriek, they don't stutter, they don't have, uh, you know, um, you know, a, a rapid heartbeat when, when they're lying. They, you know, they, it's just like saying, I'm gonna pick up a, a jug of milk. I mean, to them, it has the same emotional value. They, they don't um, experience certain abstracts like love, connection, humanity. So they're really, it's really just how they relate to the world is, to, is through power, control, getting away with things. Um, this is known as lack of conscience. In other words, even though they know that it's not right, they will do it. This will go into very vast and profound and deep uh, consequence for those either people organizations around them in other words wherever they are positioned within you must understand that with a psychopath um, because they uh, you know have also a, um, a, a a heightened degree of dopamine um, they they're the neurochemistry neuro, and the neuro hormones have been they've been found to be five times more sensitive to dopamine than the rest of the population. So basically this is traded, you know, uh, basically translated into if they want something that's rewarding for them, they're, they're gonna go after that. So they're gonna go after that, whether, you know, and so they don't have the same brakes on, on the car. They don't have the dimmer switch. They don't, you know, they can't pump the pedal. They can't pump the gas. They are very, um, you know, driven oftentimes. <clears throat> And in other words, and they, they don't feel that they are doing anything wrong because this prefrontal cortex, they also, you know, which is where the judgment center is, as well as the learning capacity. Um, so they don't really learn after their mistakes, mistakes, particularly in that of relationships. They, they just don't. Um, they will cover their tracks to an ability that most people would be, um, it would be unfathomable. From making it look to where they slept in a bed, um, to making it look where the pictures were, um, you know, rearranged, to making it look like there was food eaten from the refrigerator, uh, garbage taken out or not taken out, mysterious receipts or things left out to get attention, you know, other little things that I call it basically a psychopath calling card, you know, um, that shows, quote unquote, that someone else has been there or, you know, that is, it seems eerie or odd. They operate on enigmatic communication which is basically a brainwashing and gaslighting of others that creates a sort of a, um, a rerouting of their organic thought, you know, to be addicted to that of the psychopath relationship. Um, because of the absence, I, I really do feel it becomes like um, an active addiction um, and why they won't leave um, or it, they become so deluded um, by the by the communication of this type of individual that they, they cannot really think for themselves anymore. This really creates what I call in the victim um, a, a sense of abandonment of, of their self or values. So they no longer feel their values are where it's at, that something is more exciting, titillating, or something to be under this sort of strange preoccupation by a psychopath. Um, which is basically, it's not really a relationship, it is an experience. So it can be the relationship with this individual will feel very, very different from relationships with other people. In fact, oftentimes people will become very, very narrow-minded or very limiting in the relationships because this relationship is so off the charts for them. In other words, we seem like a match made in heaven. Um, the answer to my prayers no one has ever made me feel this way. Um, there's all this like hyperbole um, of, of of people who are in this in this state. You know, um, it's called the love bomb state, where the psychopath will tell you exactly what you want to hear. Um, they will um, be, you know, like a, a all of a sudden a um, a triumphant uh, individual in your life who can, you know, do these different things where no one else was there, or all of a sudden, you know. Um, people's business have not been going on and then they 
they team up with this person or you know they have a change of identity when they're with this person right away this person is not like other people they're not they're fearless so this might come off as being impressive or like a factor of, um, of influence from these individuals because they are so fearless and because they you know are um, so driven but the problematic is that people will stay because of this sort of super glue like I would say quality which I feel is an energetic connection when you're around these individuals a psychopath will basically tell you you know this oozes out from all over me um, and not like sweat, but we're, they're talking about this sort of hypnotic energy. They have a very hypnotic way. Um, also the reptilian gaze, the reptilian stare has a way to um, sort of lock in others um, and people misinterpret it that they are um, you know, sexually interested in them, but that is the, the reptilian gaze <clears throat> that they will engage in. Um, and so they get a power over others. This is not phony baloney. This is an actual um, different wiring that you see from these individuals. Um, and they have really an ability to sort of me metamorphosize and control and reshape the structure of an office, a company, a building. I mean, and, and, other, and the issue also, the problem is that they take delight or pleasure in others' um, misfortune, um, in, in others' ruin, um, you know, in other words, when they see people in, in hurt and in despair, losing the company, losing the money, losing the relationship, they get a, you know, they get juiced up, they get rewarded, they get their dopamine, and then they feel that, that this is kind of how they relate to others. It's not really a relationship. They will, you know, then, you know, go through a series of relationships, jobs, titles, oftentimes they can be seemingly contradictory in nature. In other words, the same person would not simultaneously, you know, be this and be that. So, and they, it is because the degree of mimicry that they engage in, it's not really, um, learnedness is that they are able to mimic others behavior and language and philosophy very, very quickly. And, um, this oftentimes serves as a fascination um, to, and then really sets this relationship apart from all others, seems to be rewarding more so than all others, when in essence, there is a psychological uh, brainwash or gaslight component that's being incorporated in the relationships, what makes it very difficult to break free of and out, you know, from under the control of. Um, this is a known approach by a psychopath. They know the effect that they are going to have on others. They will tell you that, they have told me that, um, you know, people will email me, they will make comments on YouTube. I mean, it's, they know this about themselves. In other words, you know, they have, it is very pre-calculated and premeditated what they do. I mean, to me, um, it is on the degree of criminal, but they don't really get, um, oftentimes, you know, um, they, 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 they don't ever get um, identified as such because it's it could be taking place with their wife, it could be taking place in their job, um, you know, and, and it just goes undetected. <clears throat> and, and so it becomes very difficult for people to break free. Um, it takes very difficult for people to come back to their senses. They're used or addicted really to a certain level of vibration or excitement or fear in this relationship, you know, often cause people to go and behave out of character, you know, in order to pursue or resolve the tension that the psychopath creates. In other words, whether they learn, leave little, uh, you know, clues that they're either seeing somebody or they're doing something in the business or, you know, um, they're, they're getting people ensnared and entrapped um, in worry. Um, in all of a sudden then feeling that they have to be a super sleuth um, or an investigator on this person. Um, they feel that there is something awry. There's enigmatic and puzzling types of communication or language. Uh, we call this, you know, you know, narcissist salad, word salad. Um, and there's definitely a sort of um, brainwashing and gaslighting, which is to derail and... Um, 
twist or pervert another's thought according to what is beneficial for them. So it's very insidious and very difficult to break free from for those people who have found themselves in relationships. And most people do not understand the degree of effect or influence or experience that you have had because most people don't have any other relationship like this to compare it to. They have not gone through this themselves. So they don't really know what is going on or how to get out of it. Um, so the, 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 also the brainwashing and the gaslighting is a huge reason why people become stuck um, because of the idiosyncratic language patterns that the psychopath will use that are used and then to hyper arouse or hyper stimulate the, um, the target. Um, and get them sort of off their own center, off, you know, their own rationale to where they're just sort of um, acting really um, as a means to an end for the psychopath, as a means to an end. But they don't feel that they are that. They feel that this is their relationship, um, either, you know, in the, in the workplace or in the community or in their marriage or family. Um, and so it becomes very difficult. They, they get used to this and feel that this is, you know, uh, the relationship is above and beyond any other relationship. So that can be true um, because of this type of individual. But yet it, they will oftentimes single-handedly have um, a, a negative influence, which is premeditated and pre-calculated, usually for the, the fall or destruction of that person's either credibility reputation, business, um, political, whatever it is, um, they somehow, the problem is that they take delight in other people's suffering. They feel effectual and effective that way. So this of course becomes very problematic for those people, individuals, victims, or companies who have found themselves, you know, really run into the ground um, from this. And they're very unable to detach because of the degree of shock and then really what creates you know a problem thinking disorder and feeling and they become removed sort of from their natural organic thought process which is who they are and really what they value so they might have sort of lost a grab a grizz a grasp um, from some of these things like they might have valued their children's education but after this relationship then they use the college fund to do something you know wild or out outlandish with this individual they might have um, you know, gone into um, shared company status. So with this individual and now expose them for who they are. And now they have, you know, a real problem in the business. Um, you know, these are the sort of things that we see, you know, um, you might call them the con man or con woman. Um, and, but, you know, people don't under, they, they think that it relates to something else and that it cannot happen in personal relationships. And it becomes very difficult to, to leave, i.e. think clearly um, they, um, the psychopath, that is because they engage in gaslighting, um, which basically causes people to question or doubt their reality and where they're coming from. In other words, you know, and not identify it. Um, and then ex exposing the um, psychopath is when you have seen or exposed a double or triple life. In other words, you thought you were wedded to be engaged and then they've got two or three other people that they've been dating for the same period of time. Um, you thought that they were saving for the mortgage or the kid's child education and you find that all of the bank accounts have been, you know, emptied out. Um, situations like this. Um, or you see them, um, you know, being in a, let's say they're at a job where you work and then they're a completely different person in a whole nother field that does not make sense. It is a mimicry. So uh, they will mimic others. Um, they don't feel like if, just for example, you know, the psychopath will tell you when they're 13 or 14, they don't have the same relationship desires that others do. Like, you know, to hold hands with a boy or girl, to meet, you know, a little friend, to go ice skating or roller skating or walking or hiking or studying together, whatever it is, you know, they don't have that same you know, emotional connection. And so they learn and study and then mimic others to, and, and then they try to then excel and then get other people hooked. Um, you know, so they will see, oh, wow, well, you know, uh, most guys will never, um, 
uh, go on a walk or most guys would never give this as a gift, you know, and then, but if I do this, I see that I'm able to win favor. So they'll do it as a, a not as a good gift or a, a, a pleasantry or out of authenticity. You know, I want you to have this. It's dealt, it is more for manipulation and um, very, very replete and complete manipulation. In other words, they're, they string people along for a long period of time. And they oftentimes get so deluded that they can't see the forest for the trees. They have a trouble identifying this as a problem individual. You know, they're, they, they, they you know, I will, I will, you know, they've tolerated so much that they have become really numb to a reality that this should be hurtful to them. So they end up sort of giving uh, their values away or abandoning, you know, until they find out that the psychopath has gone on, moved on. They have, you know, a, a second and third target or job or position or place to live. And then all of a sudden, poof, they are gone. And then that person is left in shock, you know, basically the shock and awe, like, oh my God, I, I can't believe this just happened, you know. And so, and then I've also spoken with people who this has happened four and five times. <clears throat> We're talking four or five marriages, you know, where a very intelligent, affluent, educated person I mean, they keep having the same relationship in a different pair of shoes, you know, where they'll empty the bank account. They'll do this, they'll, you know, it, it's just a very specific pattern, but yet she, she has a difficulty of breaking the pattern. So you have to be willing to identify these red flags and know that you are strong enough to exit the relationship. Even if it feels scary, terrorized, you must just go no contact and remove all elements in your home, in your phone, from this individual. Um, you must get them out of your system. Um, it is because you need to give yourself a chance to restore your homeostasis and balance. If you've been in a relationship with a psychopath, you have been through a lot. Um, ups and downs, goods or bads, scary or not scary, it is just to say, that you, it is something you will need to recover and restore it from. <clears throat> Especially, you know, the, the, the shock of, of what has happened and then the difficulty oftentimes people have with facing life again, facing themselves again, facing their family, being able to work. Because the psychopath will work in a number of ways that break people down, render them helpless, and then basically put in what is going to help the the psychopath, not what is going to restore you to strength and true relationship, you know, the true real deal relationship that you want. Um, so people end up sacrificing um, a lot of their time, a lot of their energy, the prime of their life. Um, and so you need to understand that it's uh, oftentimes very difficult physiologically. So you need a support system. This is something that you unequivocally need to talk about and how serious are you about restoring your happiness. How serious are you? You know, you need to watch then the, the videos here that talk about, um, you know, retooling your I am, resensitizing your senses, um, you know, really working very hard, especially in the beginning on what I call your affirmations. Not only affirmations are you speaking them to yourself, but you're speaking them to the universe at large. These need to be spoken out loud and clearly with belief and faith in self. With, uh, with, with conviction and, you know, I am just starting small. I am and repeating this. You might need to write this a thousand times. You might need to write the serenity prayer a hundred times. You might need to re-educate and use the kinesthetic um, connection between, you know, the mind and the heart while you write. R literally rewrite this experience into your life and your perspective. It can be terrifying terrifying to expose a narcissist, a psychopath. It is on another dimension that most people do not know exists. I mean, they, I mean, talk about a scary movie. Um, this is a scary experience. Period, end of story. And psychopaths know this. They know the ability that they have to sort of put a spell on others, a control. It's different than what you might just think, oh, wow, I was enamored by this guy or this girl. It is something totally different altogether. Um, and then you might feel very lost if you're outside of the relationship. So oftentimes people 
aren't they're, they're too afraid to go the next step or they don't create or look for a support system you will need a support system you will need to heal you will need to i mean and we can do a whole video on this but it is very difficult to leave oftentimes people are are, are too afraid you know they they feel that they don't have enough positive experience under their belt i cannot make it so they talk themselves out of being proactive you know so you need to develop and create an exit strategy you need to talk to professionals in your community you need to do some research you need to contact you know your police your village hall your fire department you need to go to a help center or call a hotline you know you need to do this you need to get going on this because it only gets worse and it might you know you might not be able to do it because you feel that you are alone you are not alone you need to connect and get professional assistance get you know file a restraining disorder or without restraining order do some things get some keys changed i mean we're talking for real and legit change you need results and we don't want to take five or ten years to get you the results you know you have to understand that yes it is difficult but yes you can do it it is not impossible working on an exit strategy shoring up your funds um, your connections, a place to go, um, a family member or a friend, something that you can do that you can then take the step without, you know, take the step, even if you are afraid, if you know you're doing the right thing in your heart, but you're finding it difficult, do it anyway. Get that leverage over yourself. I must, I must do this. I must. This is not, this is not I should. This is, I am, I can, and I must. You know, this has to be your language. You know, five to seven words, which you repeat over and over. So you can re give yourself credibility and trust and strength. You need to speak this into existence. <clears throat> and retain your clarity of thought. And it might take several months. It might take 18 months for you to feel completely restored you have to trust the process you have to keep on it and on it on the daily um, you know get a hand that can help you out of the rut talk to a friend be willing to share the beans and get you know talk to a friend get a therapist um, get someone to talk to get some working you know nuts and bolts that you need chances are it's not as difficult as you're making it out to be so realize that you you can do it you can liberate you can free and you can be you know a, a completely change your story and you will no longer be the body mind connection to the person who was taken advantage of you will be completely changed and then that way the psychopath will be run, 